The Snowy Range of Medicine Bow National Forest is in South Central Wyoming. Looking for a place to spend the night, we sort of dumbed onto it and the nearby town of Saratoga. We walked several trails, including the Shelf Lakes Trail at the top of the mountain. This is a marvelously beautiful area, and we called that our hike of 15 lakes. We counted 15 separate alpine lakes that we either walked along or could see. Since the trail's elevation was nearly 11,000 feet, we noticed a certain shortness of breath. At this elevation, it also wasn't surprising to find many patches of snow still on the ground. And with all the moisture, there were lots of wildflowers. Saratoga is a recent darling of the wealthy for remote getaway homes. The town is widely known for its public pool heated by a hot spring. Later that evening, we enjoyed a bull ride event called Bullfest at nearby Buck Springs Rodeo. Rocky Mountain National Park in north central Colorado celebrates the grandeur of the Rocky Mountains. On our first day, we hiked in the Bear Lake area. We saw a beautiful nymph, dream, Hayaha and Lock Lakes, as well as Alberta Falls. All beautiful high country lakes, with elevations ranging to above 10,000 feet, they were all very different. The following day we took a driving tour on two roads to the top of the park. We started with the Old Fall River Road, a nine-mile, one-way dirt road through four ecosystems up to the Alpine Visitor Center at an elevation of 11,796 feet. In its upper regions, the road traverses a large section of subalpine terrain. It's beautiful. At the Alpine Visitor Center, we walked up the path to the peak above the center. At over 12,000 feet, it may have been the highest elevation we hit on the trip. Then we toured the lower western section of the park, seeing several elk on our way down. In the river valley below, we had our first moose sightings, including a nervous close-up walking encounter with a cow and a calf. Our return trip followed Trail Ridge Road, giving us beautiful views of the alpine tundra. On our way down towards our campsite, at about 6.30 p.m., we saw a bicyclist pressing up the mountain at about the 11,000 foot elevation area. Just can't imagine that. The Grand Tetons National Park lies just south of Yellowstone and protects stunning mountain scenery and a diverse array of wildlife. The abrupt 7,000 foot vertical rise of the jagged Teton Range contrasts with the horizontal sage-covered valley and glacial lakes at their base and gives this park its world-renowned scenery. We took the concession ferry across Jenny Lake, hiked the trail to Inspiration Point, and went on from there to Hidden Falls. Continuing up Cascade Canyon, a large glacial valley, we heard that there were moose feeding up ahead and decided to try to see them for ourselves. Finally, we got to the place where a bull moose was lying down in the grass, chewing about 10 yards off the trail. That evening, we encountered a moose jam with dozens of cars stopped along the road. We joined the crowd as two big bull moose contentedly munched away right next to the road. Glacier National Park preserves an area of pristine forests, alpine meadows, rugged mountains, and spectacular lakes in northwest Montana. We started our visit at the west side of the park. We walked the Trail of the Cedars and the Avalanche Lake Trail. On our second day, we drove the famous Going to the Sun Road. This engineering marvel spans 50 miles through the park's wild interior and is claimed by some to be the neatest drive on the planet. However, with smoke from the large number of forest fires that year, we could only imagine what it must have been like when the air is clear. On a drive up North Fork Road, we stopped at the Pole Bridge Mercantile, an isolated general store that served up some tasty baked goods. They even made a gluten-free nut fruit bar that Sandy could eat. 
Years ago, the park was equipped with big red Ford touring cars that were used to transport visitors. The Ford Motor Company recently completely rebuilt them and they are back in service. Later, we headed to the east side of the park, which is a better place for hiking opportunities. On the east side of the park, we stayed at Many Glacier Campground. The best hike we had in this park was to Iceberg Lake, which nestles in the spectacular glacial cirque. We mainly drove through the North Cascades National Park's jagged peaks on our way to Seattle. With its deep valleys, waterfalls, and 300-some glaciers, it must be a spectacular place to hike and camp. The city of Seattle operates several hydroelectric facilities in the park. We spent a night in the New Halem area and hiked a couple of short trails. The most unique site was of salmon spawning at the Gorge Powerhouse. Olympic National Park covers much of the large peninsula extending from the northwest corner of Washington State. We started our visit at the Hurricane Ridge Visitor Center and walked the trail to Hurricane Hill. It seemed like quite a climb since the last 500 foot elevation gain happened mostly in the last quarter mile. Our base for beach and rainforest exploration was La Push a tiny fishing town in the Quillette Indian Reservation. Huge driftwood from the monster coastal trees littered the beaches. The downed trees are pushed out of the glacier-fed rivers each spring. The beach was not sandy, made up instead of rocks. One morning we walked the beach, exploring the exposed tidal pools. We found lots of sea anemones, mussels, barnacles, and snails. What strikes you first about Ho Rainforest is the layer upon layer of vegetation. It rains 12 to 14 feet a year here, so you can imagine that stuff grows really fast. There is no place without a plant, be it trees, ferns, moss, shrubs, fungus, or something else. Most spectacular, perhaps, were the giant trees. There were not just one or two, but thousands of them, and the mosses and ferns were just amazing. Just east of El Paso in West Texas lies the formidable-looking Guadalupe Mountains National Park. In the middle of a virtual desert, this park protects the world's finest example of a fossilized reef. We didn't have time to hike the long rim trails. Instead, we walked up to Smith Spring, Vegetation turns from desert to riparian and the spring itself is quite picturesque. The next day we followed the McKittrick Canyon Trail which leads to Pratt Camp. The camp was the vacation home of a geologist who once purchased the canyon and later donated it to the government. Pratt described the area as the most beautiful place in the country.